Palantir stock. Ticker symbol PLTR. This company continues to fluctuate with the pressure of this marketplace. At the end of last week, yes, it was up, up around 2.21%. But the further we zoom out, the worse it gets. Five day returns down 8.67%. One month returns up, up 3.33%. Again, fluctuating. But if we go out to six months, this is where we see the real picture. Over the past six months, this stock has fallen 48 0.98%. Year to date, year to date pretty much the same. Down 49.97%. One year returns, in fact, down 62.44%. If you invest in Palantir an entire year ago, 52 weeks ago, you would still have lost over 60% of your money. It is the sad reality with Palantir. And although we are up from the IPO price, up 0.76% from the IPO price, this certainly isn't the return people are speculating about back on October 2nd, 2020. They were saying this was going to be a world-changing company. And during that speculative bubble, it certainly was. Went up over 282% in value in just the space of just a few short months. And yet, the declines. The declines are what we know with Palantir. So, with the pain continuing to perpetuate around this company, with the company continuing to fall in value, fluctuating day to day, is there finally... A buying opportunity present? Is there finally a chance to start incrementally buying this company? Or is it simply too late? Is it still too dangerous and we should be staying away until the stock price declines a little more? Well, when you actually investigate it, when you actually break it down, despite the persistent declines in the underlying equity of Palantir, the consistent declines in this stock month over month, week over week, day over day, the fact of the matter is financial stability is actually fairly impressive. There's actually a fairly large degree of underlying financial stability evident within Palantir. You have a massive cash to debt ratio, a cash to debt ratio of 9.42, indicating a tremendous degree of underlying safety and stability with this business. Combine that with outstanding underlying financial strength metrics, equity to assets of 0.71, debt to equity of 0.11, you have yourself a fairly financially stable company. When you think about it, it's not just about the cash on hand. It's not just about the cash being stockpiled by this company. It is also about the operational free cash flows. Because think about it. Who are the clientele Palantir? Who do Palantir actually serve as institutional clientele? And the answer? The answer is large-scale enterprises, large-scale institutions, even government institutions. Those are the type of people that Palantir serves. And ask yourself, yes, in a recession, consumer discretionary spending dries up. Consumers aren't spending as much. But these large-scale enterprises, these large-scale clientele, they continue to spend. So even in the face of a recession, which is likely on the horizon, if not already begun, you know, Palantir is still in a fairly advantageous position. That free cash flow remains fairly consistent. And that gives them the ability not only to survive what is likely an oncoming recession, but also continually re reinvest, make opportunistic acquisitions, utilizing that free cash flow continuing to flow into their business while free cash flow to all other companies slows down. That's the power of Palantir. Constant free cash flow and constant, a large war chest of cash on hand, exuding a tremendous degree of underlying stability with this business. That's all reflected in the Altman score, an Altman score of 10.42, indicating a tremendous degree of underlying safety, stability, and certainty with this business. It is a company that, by all accounts, is not going away. It is here to stay. Despite the volatility in the marketplace, despite the people around the marketplace saying, listen, can't possibly be touching this company, can't possibly be touching a company that's down almost 50% over the past six months. But when you actually look at the numbers, when you actually analyze the business on a fundamental level, the narrative you get is vastly different. Financial stability is present. Everything we're after is present within this equity. But what about profitability? The main negative selling point that people think people point to as investors and say, listen, can't possibly be buying Palantir. They say, because the profitability is so bad. And that, I can't really argue with them there. The current net margins are pretty awful. Negative net margins of negative 30.25%. Operating margins, just as bad. Negative 20.43%. But look at this. The, op the gross margins for the company are actually positive. Gross margins of 78.16%, which on an industry basis are actually phenomenal. And when you think about it, what are the marginal costs associated with Palantir? Yes, they need server costs associated with running the software. They need staffing costs to run their operation. But the actual marginal costs associated with each additional client add on their software, it's virtually zero. And that's how those gross margins are so high. Gross margins almost at 80%. And here's some other news for you. The operating margins, the net margins, which are still currently negative, They've been incrementally increasing over time and getting better and better and better year over year. Look at this. 
Net margins are at their historical high for the company. The median over the past decade has been negative 87.74%. And yet now, they're only negative 30.25%. They're getting better and better and better quarter over quarter. Operating margins, also the historical best they've ever been at. And gross margins are the same story. So yes, the margins are negative at present, which isn't super ideal but they're getting better and better and better. Every single quarter, they seem to improve and improve and improve, which is a very appealing thing from a long-term investor. If you're speculating on Palantir, if you're focusing on the next six months, 12 months, then not at all. They ignore everything I've said. But if you're a long-term investor, someone focused on the next five, 10, 15 years, these trends are very appealing. They tell the narrative of a very, very appealing long-term investment prospect. So, Evidently, you have a high degree of financial stability. You have profitability. That's incrementally getting better and better and better over time. Even returns on equity are their historical high for the company, improving quarter over quarter. But the main thing that propels people away from Palantir when they see the lack of a tangible valuation. If we go back to that original stock graph, we can see that there's actually no P-E ratio available for the company. That is because there's no tangible earnings, no positive earnings on an earnings per share basis. But... Have a look at this. They do have a forward PE. They do have a projected forward-looking PE ratio. And that is of 56.16. So still fairly high relative to other companies in the space. The PES ratio is fairly low. The price to sales ratio of only 11.14. But still that forward PE ratio puts a lot of investors off. But think about it. Think about the actual tangible growth likely to take place in this company. And then compare it to that PE ratio. You get a pretty interesting result. Let me show you. The forward-looking three to five-year growth rate for this company on an earnings per share basis is around 35.45%. A three to five-year revenue growth rate forward-looking of 29.68%. Now, that 56 PE is certainly high, but with growth rates like that, growth rates of 35% or in excess of 35% going forward over the next half a decade, you know that forward PE ratio doesn't seem unjustified. In fact, it doesn't look like overvaluation or fair valuation. It looks like potentially a degree of undervaluation within this business. Let's break it down a little more, give you a little more detail, a little more insight into just how undervalued Palantir may be right now. We obviously can't value it on an earnings per share basis because there's no positive earnings, but there is positive free cash flow. And when we put in that 35% growth rate forward looking in terms of free cash flow going forward over the next decade, look at this. A 35% growth rate going forward in the next 10 years, discount rate of 9%, the current free cash flow per share figure of around 11, 12 cents a share, Look at that fair value. Fair value of $12.09. A margin of safety of 23.33%. That is the reality of the stock. This is the reality of this business, despite the persistent criticism of the company. So many people saying, listen, can't possibly be buying in. No tangible earnings, no tangible valuation at present. When you actually value it on free cash flow, the most fundamental of valuation metrics undervaluation becomes apparent. I think that's the reality of this marketplace. Even a stock like Palantir, which has largely speculative qualities over the past few months, appears undervalued. There appears to be a buying opportunity present. Fear has taken such a firm grip of this marketplace that even now these companies that were supposedly speculative now look undervalued. That's the reality of this marketplace. It's really the opportunities evident around this marketplace more broadly right now. Companies that have massive long-term growth prospects trading substantially below their intrinsic value. And right now, I think if you can tolerate the fear, tolerate the volatility, there's never been a better time to buy. But of course, conduct your own research first, look into the company before you make any moves. But if you enjoyed this video, if you have to learn something more about my current thoughts on Palantir relative to the market more broadly, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company or topic you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below. would love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.